Cast, breaking news from the reef. Hello, this is Ryan Danhauser, and this just in from the reef. Uh, this article was written by Rob Reidenauer on December 14th, 2018. Candyman script has been written. In an older report back in late November from the entertainment site Mashable, it appears that the script for the Candyman spiritual sequel has already been written, according to the co-writer Wynne Rosenfield, who shared news on his Twitter account. He wrote, Wrote a scary-ass movie with Jordan Peele. It has a great hook. Can't wait to work with the brilliant Nia DaCosta. Uh, Deadline Hollywood retweeted. And since uh, the new script is finished, I'm curious to know what the filmmakers have taken from the story. I still think that Bride of the Candyman storyline is the way to go, but whatever they've come up with, I'm sure it will be worth it. I'm also hoping the character of Jake returns as well. Uh, Don't forget to join the Facebook group Bring Back Jake Candyman 2020. Uh, Candyman is slated for a June 2020 release. Thanks to Mashable for sharing the news. This news post was written by Rob Reidenauer on December 21st, 2018. After many delays, it now appears that Paul Kane's latest book, Hellraisers, brand new interviews with the creators of the Hellraiser mythology, is now making its official bow on Amazon Kindle. You can place your order today by following the link below where you can also get a small preview of what to expect from this book. A hardback copy will be released by Avalard Publishing in the upcoming future. We'll keep you posted on that as more news is made available. It looks like Paul has created the ultimate Hellraiser interview book. Of course, I'm always looking forward to hearing what Clive has to say about the universe he created, but I'm sure all the interviews will be a blast to read. I'm tempted to purchase the Kindle edition, but I'll probably hold out for the hard copy version of the book for my bookshelf. I'm so tempted, though. Uh, Special thanks to Danny Stewart for sharing the news. The Dark Art of Clive Barker Lecture Discussion, uh, written by Ryan Danhauser, December twenty second, 2018. A friend of the show and senior lecturer in film studies and American studies, Dr. Sorcha Line, will be giving a lecture titled Hellbound Hearts, The Dark Art of Clive Barker, uh, London, for the Miskatonic Institution of Horror, Institute of Horror Studies in the Horse Hospital. It's scheduled for May 9th, 2019, 7 o'clock to 10 p.m. Admission in advance is 10 pounds. Uh, pre-order tickets here and tell Dr. Sorka that the Barker cast sent you. <laughs> Listeners to our podcast will remember her in our episode uh, 202, Dark Imaginer with Dr. Sorcha, Sorka Line, And she also joined us in the discussion of Clive Barker's uh, 2001 novel, Cold Heart Canyon. Why do they never have cool things like this in Fairbanks, Alaska? This article was written by Rob Reidenauer on January 6th, 2019. Gary Tunnicliffe discusses the Hellraiser franchise and horror. In some very informative and entertaining video interviews conducted by YouTube video blogger Mr. H, Gary Tunnicliffe discusses the future of the Hellraiser series and the state of the horror genre in general. I've summarized some of the best parts that I enjoyed from them. The first video has Gary talking about the overall reaction to Hellraiser Judgment, which was mixed as everyone expected. I'm glad the film found an audience and made some people shut up after watching it. Uh, The second part was the state of the horror genre, which I'll say I highly agree with their comments about the new Halloween. While I enjoyed it the first time I saw it, my second viewing on the film wasn't as good. The first 45 minutes are solid, but the movie isn't exciting at all. In fact, when Michael gets to Haddonfield, it becomes downright boring. I did dig the score, though. Uh, Tunnicliffe also feels that we'll never see a Nightbreed TV series either. But before everyone jumps the gun, that's just his opinion. It's not fact. And in the third part, they discuss Clive's Hellraiser remake script, which they weren't very impressed with. The main problem they seemed to have uh, with was that it lacked humanity. I can understand some of their points since I've read it as well, but overall I think with a few, with a few more polishes that script would have been made a good film. And while there's a, a lot of interest in bringing back the Hellraiser series, it seems the Scream franchise is what Blumhouse Productions is more interested in at the moment. Also, don't expect any follow-up to Judgment because the new Miramax regime wants to get as far away from the old one as possible. Smart move on their part, but I would have loved to have seen a sequel to Judgment. 
I highly recommend checking out all these videos. I've attached links below. Also, uh, here Mr. H's uh, remake script review. Thanks to Mr. H. This article was written by Rob Reidenauer on January 12, 2019. Rare depiction of Candyman revealed. Clive Barker's original incarnation for the character of the Candyman in his Books of Blood short story, The Forbidden, is a much different uh, beast than what Bernard Rose gave us in his adaptation. In the story, he's described more like a sickly ghost with waxy jaundiced skin, rough cheeks, blue lips, eyes like rubies in a patchwork coat. Of course, the movie went down a different route, than, uh, and the audience was given something much closer to Phantom of the Opera, which is fine. It's more of a classic monster look that I think the general audiences were able to relate to. Before being published in Volume 5 of the Books of Blood, the story actually made its debut in a horror fiction uh, semi-prosine called Fantasy Tales, which was created by Clive Barker's Shadows in Eden, author Stephen Jones. He discussed this more in depth in the audio tracks that he and Kim Newman provided for both the Arrow Video and Scream Factory recent Blu-ray special editions. Luckily, uh, bloody disgusting columnist Jason Jenkins was able to get a copy of the issue from eBay and was kind enough to share the artwork that was created by Jon Stewart. In, this is a much more nightmarish version of the character that reminds me of something out of H an H.P. Lovecraft story. The wild man appearance really gets under my skin. It's the stare that does it. Uh, kudos to Stuart for coming up with a look that is truly unnerving. I think this would be a very interesting depiction for the new film to explore if they decided not to use Tony Todd. Check it out. Uh, to read the rest of this fascinating article, click the link below. Thanks to Jason Jenkins from and Bloody Disgusting. This article was written by Rob Reidenauer on January 16th, 2019. Nightbreed, now streaming on IMDb Free Drive. I wanted to let our listeners know that the theatrical cut of Nightbreed is now available to be watched on the Internet Movie Database's new streaming service called Free Drive. Unlike other streaming services like Netflix, Vudu, and Amazon Prime, you don't have to sign up for a membership. All you do is sign into your IMDb account or create a free one, and you're ready to go. The only downside is that you'll have to sit through ads that repeatedly reoccur during the movie. Follow the link below to start watching today. I only wish that it was the director's cut that you could watch. I know some fans still enjoy the released version, but after seeing how much the studio butchered Clive's version, I personally can't go back to, the cut, to that cut of the film. All I see are the mistakes and missed opportunities. But for people who have never seen the film, it might be an interesting way to introduce them to it and then show them either the director's cut or cabal cut to show them how much better those versions are. Thanks to Bloody Disgusting and IMDb. This article was written by Rob Reidenauer on January 16th, 2019, with an update by Ryan Danhauser, January 26th, 2019. Update on the Nightbreed TV series. I'm sure a lot of Nightbreed and Clive Barker fans have been wondering what's going on with the upcoming Nightbreed TV series. It's been a long time since we've heard anything on the topic. Well, uh, this morning on Occupy Midian, Clive Barker archivist Phil and Sarah Stokes responded to Nightbreed fan Mark McCurley's question about what's going on with the show. While their response is more about Clive's work in general, there's an obvious hint that the show is definitely moving forward. Phil and Sarah Stokes said, There's a huge amount of work going on in the wings, Mark. As soon as Clive's able to share more, we'll update one and all. So there you have it. Hopefully we'll get more updates as the year goes on. We'll keep everyone informed as more news becomes available. Thanks to Mark McCurley and Phil and Sarah Stokes. Update 126, 2018. Clive discusses the progress of the Nightbreed series in the most recent revelatory interview with Phil and Sarah Stokes of clivebarker.info. That he's got a team together, and they will soon begin writing the long-term direction of the TV series. Uh, here's a quote from Clive Barker. Nightbreed is also moving forward at quite a rate, with a couple of very well-known directors showing a great deal of interest in it. I'm on board to provide mythologies and ideas, and hopefully uh, put the Barkarian weirdness on the material. At the moment, we're putting the team together. We have a writer, director, producers... And now that the new year has begun, we'll all get together and start to plan the long-term narrative. Not just the opening narrative, which is what we've done so far. 
I have the sense that, if all things that I've been promised come true, there is a real passion for matching the tone of both the book and the film. This article was written by Rob Reidenauer on January 18, 2019. <clears throat> Tony Todd is coming to Chicago. Would you love to have a chance to meet the Candyman himself and in costume? If so, you'll be happy to know that actor Tony Todd will be attending the Chicago Flashback Weekend later this year. Uh, the event will take place at the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel in Rosemont, Illinois, and will last August 2nd through 4th. Fans will also have the opportunity to take pictures with the actor, who will also be wearing his trademark costume. Tickets aren't available yet, but it looks like pre-orders will be starting sometime soon. Other guests include Bruce Campbell, Robert England, Ted Ramey, Melinda Clark, and Alicia Witt. Uh, we've also been told by fan Derek Neal that Helen herself, Virginia Madsen, will be in attendance as well. You can visit the official event site by following the link below at flashbackweekend.com. Also, hotel discount accommodations are already available. Also, I'm sure around this time the new Candyman movie will be heading into production. Hopefully, Tony will be involved with that somehow, and we'll be sharing more news about it in, at the event he's attending. Let's hope so. Thanks to Ryan Danhauser and Derek Neal. This article was written by Rob Wright in our January 23rd, 2019. I wanted to let our listeners know that the author and Hellraiser sequel screenwriter Peter Atkins will once again be appearing on the podcast, Thorn and Cross Haunted Nights Live, today at 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern time zones. The topic of discussion hasn't been revealed, but I'm hoping it has to do with some of his newest short story work like The Way Charlie Saw It and The Stuff That Dreams Are Made Of. I'll be doing reviews on those for the blog very soon. Uh, but regardless of the topic, you know it's going to be an entertaining discussion when you have Peter Atkins on your show. If you ask him to talk about toilet paper, I think he could talk for two hours, and afterwards you'd be inspired to go out and buy a whole shelf of Charmin Ultra Soft. When we had him on the podcast a couple of years ago, it was some of the most fun that we've had. Follow the link below to Thorn and Cross Haunted Nights live official blog. Thanks to Rolling Darkness Review and Thorn and Cross. This article was written by Rob Reidenauer on January 25th, 2019. The Painter, the Creature, and the Father of Lies, New Edition. If you're a subscriber to the Clive Barker Archive, I'm sure you've got their email message about the new revised paperback edition of The Painter, the Creature, and the Father of Lies. This new volume will include updated essays and an undiscovered introduction for the Books of Blood that goes all the way back to 1982. The sale will start on January 26th, with the first 100 copies being signed by Clive himself. Also, don't forget to check out Phil and Sarah Stokes' new interview with Clive at the official Revelation site, where Clive talks about new books and TV projects. The world of Clive Barker is going to be growing vastly over the next year, and we'll keep you updated like always. Update. You can now order the new paperback edition by following the link below. Thanks to the Clive Barker Archive. This article was written by Rob Reidenauer, January 25th, 2019. Tony Todd comments on Candyman vs. Leprechaun. When I was growing up, I always thought the idea of making characters like Freddy and Jason fight each other on the big screen would be a hallmark of horror cinema. But after watching the abomination known as Freddy vs. Jason, I realized how wrong I was. Of course, the film was very successful, and in Hollywood, the end justifies the means, and many other projects with characters fighting each other were pitched around. There was actually a Pinhead vs. Michael Myers that got very close to getting made until Halloween rights holders squashed the idea. But there was also a proposed Candyman vs. Leprechaun movie that someone thought would be a good idea as well. Thankfully, actor Tony Todd turned this idea down without missing a beat, and he explains why to the site comicbook.com some, with some very valid reasoning. This was right around the time of Freddy vs. Jason and Candyman vs. Leprechaun did come across my desk. I saw it and I said, I will never be involved in something like that. Tony shared with Dread Central, I respect the character. Once a horror character becomes something of an icon like Candyman, reluctantly or not, you have to treat that with respect. That I, I remember watching Abbott and Costello vs. Frankenstein continuously as a kid and being amazed that my horror legend was making a comedy. 
So I guess there are some ways to make something like that work, but I wasn't interested in doing that with Candyman. I couldn't agree more. Characters like Pinhead and Candyman would never be in this type of film because they were forces to be reckoned with. Their sole purpose was to terrify the audience, not make them laugh. And even though both franchises have had their own misfires, at least they never fell into self-parody. So let's all be glad that this never happened. Thanks to comicbook.com. This article was written by Jose Letao and Ryan Danhauser on January 26, 2019. There, um, Clive Barker's Deep Hill. There's a new revelatory interview at Revelation's website where Clive Barker announces some pretty enthusiastic news. He's not only working on a new book, Deep Hill, previously Scare Baby, but he talks about his life. Now he's still recovering every day from the toxic shock that sent him into a coma in 2012, gives us an update on the sci-fi Nightbreed TV series, as well as confirming the rumor of the Books of Blood TV series with Brandon Braga. Deep Hill is a novel uh, we have been following for a couple of years, previously known as Scare Baby in earlier drafts. You might remember Amazon.com jumping the gun and listing Scare Baby available for pre-order on their site in September 2017. We even made an April Fool's post claiming that Scare Baby will be the deluxe hardcover of the one-page Aberat poem of the same name. Uh, now Clive Barker has given us some detail on the current incarnation called Deep Hill, which has become more personal and relates to his near-death experiences in 2012. Said Clive, uh, I was moved to come at the book with a much more serious intent than earlier drafts had contained because I came closer to dying a few years ago. And nothing concentrates your mind more forcibly than proximity of a permanent goodbye. He also notes in the interview that it's a darker novel, not for a very young audience. It's not sexual and doesn't contain adult language, but darker and more violent than earlier drafts. We recommend you read the whole interview, but we'll continue to break down the news and give you our takes on it. Uh, please note that the above sketch is one that Clive has used for convention promotion and not necessarily related to Deep Hill, which has no release cover artwork at this point. Written by Gisele Letao and Ryan Danhauser. This article is written by Ryan Danhauser, January 26, 2019. Books of Blood TV series is real. Back in July 2018, we reluctantly reported on a mysterious blog post from Bleeding Cool. The link is now dead. Uh, that Clive Barker and Brandon Braga and Seth MacFarlane would be collaborating on a TV series on Hulu. I say reluctantly because the article was very short and had no sources. We were skeptical, but we now know that uh, thanks to the new revelatory interview with Phil and Sarah Stokes, that at least part of this is true. Clive Barker has been working with Brandon Braga of Star Trek and Cosmos on a Books of Blood TV series. From the new interview, we learn that the series will be expanded to also include new stories. And a quote from Clive Barker, What I'm trying to do is at very least match and in some cases surpass the intensity of the original Books of Blood. Some of those stories have a nod and a wink to another kind of narrative. I mean, New Murders in the Rue Morgue is an example, obviously a nod to Poe, but there's Rawhead Rex, which is a straight-off monster story. And I want to revisit those kinds of stories. I want to do a new monster story, for instance, something that is fresh and for a modern audience. Personally, I hope to, it includes all the old Books of Blood stories, and the idea of a new Clive Barker story told in an anthology TV series is a dream come true. And I can't wait for this to come out. More news on this as it develops. Will you watch the, uh, the show when it comes out? More than 30 years after their original publication, the Books of Blood still resonate, and will hopefully bring a new generation of fans to Clive. Do you have a news story or a promotion that might be a good fit? Contact us at www.clivebarkercast.com through email or social media.